What's up, YouTube? It's your boy Sticks, and I'm back with a reaction video. Hey, check this out. If this is the first time you're coming across my channel, be a real one. Hit that like button. You want to be a part of the come up? Hit that subscribe button. On this channel, I take all the craziest videos off the internet and react to them. So today, what I have for you is some of the darkest videos to ever be seen on YouTube. Huh. Let's get started. It was a tense scene in the city of Culiacan, Mexico, as a group of officers surrounded a home with their weapons drawn. And that tension was more than justified, as the officers were soon to become part of history, taking down one of the most notorious criminals in the region, a man named Ovidio Guzman Lopez, the son of Joaquin Guzman, also known as El Chapo. There he is, the man known as El Chapo, finally back in custody after 13 years on the run since bribing his way out of prison. Despite his father having been arrested back in 2014, Ovidio was still a free man, continuing his father's legacy by taking a lead role in the cartel. But this day was set to be his last as a free man, as officers prepared to enter the home and detain Ovidio. The sting itself was supposedly set up by the Mexican government as a way to halt the cartel's reign over the region. And for the cops partaking in this daring moment, they were set to be heroes, should it all go off without a hitch. Yeah, they were set to be heroes because everybody knows the cartel, <clears throat> they have enough resources to literally go to war. The police usually won't even mess with them because they don't want them type of problems. So... Let's see what's about to happen here. In that day, that's exactly what would happen. As Ovidio was taken into custody and the scene was secured, without a single shot being fired, making what should have been a huge win for the Mexican government, had the story ended there. The city of Culiacan, Mexico, the historic homeland to the violent Sinaloa drug cartel, turned into a battle zone Thursday. The city quickly became a war zone with the cartel sending over 700 armed soldiers in retaliation against the arrest of Ovidio, all despite the fact that officers had actually made Ovidio call off any such actions by the cartel, as shown in the end of this body cam footage, though they refused to listen. And That's crazy. They sent, they sent in over 700 cartel members to go in and terrorize the city because they arrested him. I'm telling you, they pretty much, in that side of the region, they pretty much run everything. And if you're in like Guatemala, Mexico, and you want to get to the United States without having to get, you know, your green card and stuff, you have to pay the cartel to get here. And it's a very dangerous situation anytime you're messing with the cartel. We have a few guys at work that has told me stories about being in Mexico and Guatemala and I'm telling you what if they see a family that's getting a nice house nice car sending money from America they could just show up at your property kill you and take over your property and nobody will even question them that's how serious it is let's go and within hours, the military in the region was completely overwhelmed. And with the city in absolute chaos and countless fatalities looming in the distance, the Mexican government would make a shocking decision to allow Ovidio Guzman to walk free. The move was stunning, though it did immediately quell the fighting in the region. And for a moment, all seemed calm. Though in the minds of the car- Wow. They didn't want them type of problems 
so bad that they let him walk free. They know that they're into the drug trade, child tra trafficking trade, all that. They had this man, which isn't an easy task, but they let him walk because of what the cartel did to the city. Think about that. Let's go. Tell members, things were nowhere near even. Which brings us back to this video. In it, we see multiple officers taking part in the operation, with the leader of it all being a man named Eduardo. And though these officers likely thought that their actions that day would make them heroes, this decision would instead make them hunted. Just days after the botched arrest, Eduardo would be stalked and confronted by armed members of the cartel who would open fire in a hailstorm of bullets when the man was in his car. In total, 155 shots were fired at Eduardo. Damn, they let him go, right? They let him go because they didn't want him tearing up the city. But the officer that was involved in arresting him they fired over 155 shots into his car. Just swish cheesed his whole entire car. You are not surviving that. I guess it's one of those things like, you better make sure he's dead. <laughs> and they did. Damn. Who never stood a chance. And the horrors of this video don't end there. As despite Eduardo being the only officially confirmed death of all of these officers, it has been heavily rumored that in the time since the recording, every single one of the officers seen in this clip have since been killed. As they became the cartel's easiest form of revenge against the police, being picked off one by one to send a message to the whole world. Every one of the arresting officers were killed. That's how much pull they have. That's how much resources they have. Now us here in America, we couldn't even wrap our head around that. There's not a big enough gang out there that's going to come tear up the city, do all this, and the government just say, hey, just let him go. And we think we got it bad. For real, shit's crazy. Damn, let's go. And watching this clip back and seeing just how calm Ovidio was during his arrest, I have to believe that he knew that this was going to happen. And though he was the one being arrested, it really seemed like it was the police that had fallen into his trap. Making this yet another example of the disturbed content found across the depths of YouTube. Depths in which today we are yet again diving into as we look to discover more of YouTube's darkest videos. <laughs> to all my friends, I'm glad you came to play. Our fun and learning never end. Here's what we did today. I just have a couple questions for you. Here we are again, Reed, and there's no place that I'd rather be because the Christmas spirit here is just unbelievable. Since its inception, YouTube has been used as a launching ground for aspiring performers to have their work noticed by the masses. But for every success story you see across the site, there are hundreds of thousands of others who will land well short of achieving that fame. And lost in the crowd of these nameless faces was an aspiring rapper named Math Boy Fly. His real name is Daryl Brooks, a now 39-year-old man who had spent most of his life on the wrong side of the law. At the age of just 17, he would pick up his first felony for battery, and from there he would never really get his life back on track, picking up fresh charges on a regular basis. By 2007, Daryl's life was in a total freefall, as he had become addicted to meth while picking up his most serious conviction yet for rape against a minor which not only landed him in prison, but it also landed him on the sex offender registry. Damn. So, this inspiring rapper got hooked on meth, molested or raped a child, and was put on the, the registry for sex offenders. You could pretty much say his career's over from there. Hey, but what... From what we know about other sex offenders, <clears throat> some people don't seem to care. They don't. Just because you molested a kid, 
You did little jail time, leave them alone. That's what people told me about Minor Mouse. Now me personally, after hearing that, I have no type of respect for him at all. Anybody that touches a kid or forces their self on anybody, I just will, I will never respect that person. So, I don't know what's about to happen in this video. I haven't watched this video, but let's go. Clearly, Daryl was a disturbed man dealing with some extremely dark personal demons, which just so happened to be captured by a film crew who at the time were documenting the struggles of meth addiction. The movie's name is Crystal Darkness, and in it we see a short segment showing Daryl in prison, sharing how he had abandoned his kid due to his addiction, while expressing regret that he couldn't give his child a better life. You know, I got this, I got this beautiful kid who's, who's going without my time. I, I thought I would just be this wonderful father, this, just be the greatest dad ever. I'm gonna give him everything that I didn't have. But then it's like, reality set in. In an interview years later, the director of the project, a man named Logan Needham, described Daryl as seemingly genuine in his pursuit to turn his life around, stating, maybe genuine to try to turn his life around, right? But, like he said, he lost this kid. And I mean, drug addiction is a crazy thing, right? Now, let's separate that from being a child molester, okay? Because drug addiction is a disease. You could get help for it. You can come back from that. Being a child molester, in my eyes, you can never come back from that. People sell their kids to get high because they don't want to get they don't want to go sick. They don't want to withdraw. There's a lot of crazy sick people. And you know it. I mean, it's expressed everywhere on the internet, it's everywhere. But he wind up losing his kid. And it's probably best just due to the fact that he's already a sex offender and on the registry, right? So, does he really deserve to be raising a kid? What type of role model would this guy be for a kid in the first place, right? So, he's already out there doing drugs. He's already molested or raped one other kid. I mean, he brings nothing to the table, if you ask me. He is no type of role model. But, let's watch the video, see what happens. I felt like he definitely had remorse, and I think he felt bad about the decisions he had made to land him where he was. However, Daryl would never turn this new leaf, and once he was released, his dangerous behavior only got worse, as time and time again he would find himself back behind bars, facing charges like strangulation, domestic abuse, and bail jumping. Though he didn't let these endless legal troubles get in the way of his one true dream, a dream that he believed would finally bring him some semblance of success in this world, with that being to become a famous rapper. And so he took on the nickname Math Boy Fly and began posting his music to YouTube, where we find what would one day become one of the darkest videos on the site. The video was posted back in the summer of 2018 and featured Daryl's song, Half a Ticket. The video features a lot of your standard music video visuals, though ultimately nothing really stands out all that much upon first viewing, aside from how bad it sounds. But today, this clip is viewed in a far different manner. Around the time of its release, something was brewing inside of Daryl. His life was at a dead end and he knew it, leading to his violent temper growing worse and worse by the day. In 2020, Daryl would- Look, I respect anybody trying to hustle and make their way up from nothing. I respect that, you know what I'm saying? Whether the music was good or not, Put it in the comments. Do you think it was good music? But now I can't get my brain away from 
him being a sex offender. So no matter what they say in this video, I just cannot feel bad for this guy. Now, I don't know where this is going to turn. Uh, Math Boy Fly, maybe some of you guys heard of him. Maybe you, some of you guys know him. Me personally, I have no idea about this guy. But so far from what I hear, he's really fucked it up. He has fucked it up bad. He's dug a hole that he's not getting out of. Let's go. Be arrested for firing a shot at his nephew during an argument. And though the bullet thankfully missed the man, Daryl would still be faced with 10 years in prison as police discovered that the gun he had used was actually stolen along with a large amount of meth being found in Daryl's pocket, which all cultivated into the prospect of a lengthy prison sentence. Though due to issues with the pandemic, Daryl would eventually be allowed to leave police custody, as his bail had been reduced to just $500. Unsurprisingly, this would further enable Daryl's behavior, and the following year he would yet again be arrested. In this particular case, Daryl had been in his car stalking his ex-girlfriend, who was also the mother of his child, before pulling up alongside her and demanding that she get in. Concerned for her safety, the woman refused to enter the car, to which Daryl reacted by running her over. Thankfully, this woman too would survive the ordeal. <sighs> Damn, he ran his baby mom over. The person is taking care of his kid. So... In the beginning, he was just complaining about how bad he felt that he wasn't there for his kid. But his idea is, I'm going to run my baby mom over the person that is taking care of my kid. Damn, the way some people think is just really fucked up out here. It really is. Let's go. Though shockingly, despite Daryl's constant run-ins with the law, as well as this crime having taken place when he was literally already on bail, he would yet again avoid jail time, as his bail was, in this case, set at just $1,000. Free again, Daryl likely began to think that he was above the law, which... He ran his baby mom over and he got a $1,000 bail? Woo, that C-19 was letting them boys out of jail quick and fast in a hurry because that damn near should have been tipped at murder. I don't know what he got charged with, but so far he had a $500 bail. He's had a $1,000 bail. Now, I've been locked up several times, and I ain't never been showed no love like that. Just straight up. I mean, so far it seems like he hasn't learned his lesson because how's he going to take it serious? If he just keeps doing dumb shit and getting right back out. Some people need to be locked up. I hate saying that because I hate the prison, the whole prison fucking money scheme thing. I hate that. But some people really do need to be behind bars. Let's go. Paired with his escalating anger would unsurprisingly lead to one more violent outburst. Though what was surprising was just how violent it would be. On November 21st, 2021, days after Daryl's most recent arrest, police would be called to the home of his ex-girlfriend as they had yet again gotten into another dispute. But this time, before things had gotten too far out of hand, Daryl stormed out, got into his car, and drove away. Though rather than this being some sign of restraint, this was instead seemingly part of a far more malicious decision leading to one devastating event. <laughs> that day, Daryl Brooks would drive his car directly into the annual Waukesha Christmas Parade at speeds of over 40 miles per hour. It's that dude. I didn't even know that this whole entire time. I heard about this. Hell nah. See, that's one thing about me not watching these videos before I react to them. Because I want to see it with you guys kind of thing react in the moment but that's crazy i heard about this this dude is fucked up 
driving in a zigzag pattern in an attempt to strike as many people as possible, none of whom Daryl had known personally, as this was simply an act of pure rage. The videos of this event and its aftermath are brutal, and it's something that I'm not allowed to fully show here. But in total, 62 people were struck, most of whom were children or senior citizens, who were just trying to enjoy this beloved community celebration. And of these victims, sadly, six would perish. Following the tragedy, Daryl attempted to flee the area, even begging a stranger to let him into his home and to order him an Uber. Let me ask you guys a question, man. Right? If you have beef with somebody out on the streets and you handle it in that way, that's you. That's your business. But what type of person does it take time after time again to run over and hurt innocent people? Kids trying to enjoy a Christmas parade. Kids were ran over in this. Even though only six people died, I think they said like 64 people were injured. Some of them being small kids. What type of person does that? I never understand the, uh, the school shooters, the Buffalo, New York shooter, all that shit. I can't understand that. Because if you have a problem with somebody or the system, deal with it through them. Why are you out here killing innocent people that has nothing to do with your situation? Nothing at all. They're just trying to go through life and enjoy life. You don't know what them people's been through. It's probably been hard for them too. And here you come on your crystal meth, rolling a bowl. And just running people over. Straight child molester. Ran his baby mom over. This guy right here. If. <sighs> Let's just finish this video. Come on. Which would be caught on a ring doorbell camera. Though he would quickly be captured by police soon after. And is now facing a whopping 77 charges. And despite the leniency he's enjoyed from the court system over the years, it seems that this time, the judge will- Damn, look at homeboy's dreads. He was on a bender. He was going through it. He's got a couple dreads just hanging on by a hair. Look like he'll walk and his damn dreads just fall off. He's trying to keep them things to the last second. Goofy ass dude right here. This right here is a goofball for real. This right here is a buster. Let's go. Will not show him that same type of mercy. I wasn't a human anymore. I was just something vile, disgusting, despicable. I can go, I can go on, I can use a lot of words, but that's, that's what I became. It's, it's really what I became. Knowing what Daryl has become, and watching this documentary back with this context, makes it a truly haunting watch, as no one involved, not even Daryl himself, knew just how bad things would one day become. But there is a reason that I mention this seemingly obscure music video, as being one of the darkest videos on the site, and it's for a reason that is very easy to look right over. Yes, you do. I just got a low worth about a half a ticket. Yep. As Daryl is shown rapping in the video, within its background, we can see a red SUV. The same SUV that just a few years later would bring chaos, pain, and despair to a local parade. And ultimately end the lives of so many innocent people. You've had a great time. Tough to needle. All right, guys, that's pretty much it. Commercial at the end, whatever. Look, if you enjoy these type of videos, put it in the comments. I'm going to keep searching the internet for crazy videos to bring to you. But if you got something you want to recommend to me, you want to see me react to it, let me know. But look, until next time, hold your head. Stay out of prison.